Hello and welcome to LARPRIDE. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pair of leather galoshes or half chaps such as these. And these are great for three reasons. One, they look good. Two, they're protecting my legs when I'm running through the woods, through underbushes, through thorn bushes. These will keep my legs, my trousers from getting torn up. You can even flip up this piece and it will protect my knee when I'm kneeling on the ground digging or making a campfire or something. And third, these are hiding my combat boots. Why I'm wearing combat boots and why I might want to hide them I discussed in a video last week. I'll share that uh, up here or maybe up here. But for today, like and subscribe, and I'm showing you exactly how I made these. To start with, I have to make a pattern. I'm starting with this piece of cardboard as my starting point. I'm repeating myself here. So this will about fit and I know that here in the front I will need a bit of extra material. So this is where I will cut my pattern, make two pieces and form it like that. But the cardboard is nothing like the thin leather I want to use as material. So I'm using instead this leftover wool blanket from my How to Make a Gambeson video. And I copy the pattern onto that. While also making the first modifications on the fly. So I want there to be uh, an extension at the top, a small round bit there to cover my knee. Another modification right on the fly is that at the bottom I'm going outwards. So this will curve and follow the curvature of my foot when I sew these two pieces together. And they shall fit together like this. Off to the sewing machine, do a simple stitch just to see how it fits together. And with that done, let's see how it fits onto my leg. want this to wrap around like this, want the front to overlap the back and this is actually not too bad. Just a slight modification I think. As it is, this is not covering enough of my boot I think. I want all of the lacing to be covered. So I'm putting like a, a lip up in front, a tongue up in front and I'm marking right here on my foot the shape that I want to have. Then I'm making the first modifications before even trying it out. This is very much trial and error process. Back from the sewing machine, now there's this lip up in front. Let's try it out again. And I think this is a good way to start with the leather working. So I'm undoing the stitches I've just done and this will become my pattern that I can lay flat and copy onto the leather. This is thin, about 2 mm thin, quite flexible and soft kettle leather. And I think at some point I've bought a whole skin of this stuff. So I've still got plenty left over from my past projects. But when I'm copying the pattern onto this, I try to waste as little material as possible. And for the other leg, you just have to mirror the pattern. Note here that on my uh, first cutout, 
I put the pattern the wrong way up on the leather. And as I make the second, the mirrored set of parts, I'm mitigating that error. And this is how it shed all fit together and get sewing. I could easily have sewn this on my leather sewing machine, but I thought it would look much better, uh, actually worse, but much more appropriate for the character if I were to sew this by hand. So that's what I'm doing. First, I'm using this spiked wheel here to mark where all the stitches are going to go. Uh, these, this wheel here particularly makes very small tight stitches, so I'm only using every other mark. I first thought I would have to pre-punch these holes, so I'm using an all here and a bit of the pattern, I think, actually, as a cushion to punch into. But I thought this leather is so soft, I don't need to pre-punch it. So instead, I'm using my sewing awl. Start with rolling out by twice the length of yarn, of the length of the seam you want to stitch and that is going to become the under thread. So basically how this works, you will have one piece of the thread on the underside of whatever you are sewing. When you make a punch with the sewing awl, you then thread the yarn through the loop you're creating, securing the loop on the back side, just like a sewing machine actually. So you could call this a manual sewing machine. And you just do that with every stitch go all the way through. Let's have a look in close up. So, punch through. Then you take your under thread and pull it through the loop you just created. And you pull the sewing all back out, pull everything tight, and then rinse and repeat. And since this is taking a very long time, I won't be doing this in camera, but at a free evening watching about three episodes of Deep Space Nine to do both pieces. So this is a few days later and this is all soon together. And it is time for the closing mechanism. I'm going to use this nice Celtic knot pattern brass buttons. And I think five per side will be enough. If not, I can always add four more buttons going to a total of nine per side. 
And this time I'm using my punch and fires to pre-punch the holes where I'm going to sew through. You can measure where you're putting this to make sure everything is nice and symmetrical and perfect, but I'm just eyeballing it here. I'm using the same waxed polyester leather yarn I've used for the stitches. This stuff is very tough. It's impossible to tear apart with your hands. And I'm using a double length of this. Meaning that I only have to go through here two times to secure the button. Also doing a little knot here at the end so it won't pull through the hole while I'm sewing this down. And once that is secured with a double knot, I'm searing the ends of the yarn off here. And I'm using the flame to melt the plastic. So this will become a blob that won't become undone. And after doing that nine more times, I'm trying where I want to put the loops on the other side to bind this to close this up. You could also use like five leather straps and use buckles to close this or lace it all the way up. But I thought this button and lace combination I'm doing would both work and look good. So after selecting the correct size of hole punch on my punching pliers, I'm doing 10 holes here where the lace will go through, two holes per button. As you see, I'm uh, a few centimeters away from the edge here, so I've got a bit of room to pull this really snug and tight around my leg. Pulling out these leather laces, I think I will need a double length to do all the loops I want to do. The idea here is that I will have small loops that will just fit the buttons and because they are all connected as I put this on I can pull this tight. So I can adjust this to whatever pants I'm wearing underneath. I'm not quite sure yet if this is the best way to do it. Maybe I will modify this as I try this out more, maybe do individual loops, but for now it's not working too badly. To secure this front lip here in place and keep the whole thing from shifting around on your boot and the whole galosh from turning on your leg, 
I will secure this with more leather laces. This will be run under my boot once, then I tie it up on top. This won't work if you are using flat soled shoes, like historic medieval shoes or boots. You need heels, so you have a little gap where you can run the laces through. If you don't, you will always step on them. That won't be very comfortable and they will wear through pretty quickly. So to secure these, I'm just punching two holes and I make a little knot to keep the lace from pulling through. I'm securing a length of lace on each side. To finish this, to treat the leather, I'm using Ballastol Universal Oil. You could also use WD-40 or something, uh, linseed oil maybe, or proper leather fat, leather wax. Basically, this will keep the leather from drying out and becoming hard, especially if it becomes wet and then you dry it maybe at a campfire. This will make the leather waterproof. And as you can see, I am not skimping on the oil here. Don't worry, this will all soak in and dry out, so apply a generous amount. And this finishes the build. All that is left is letting it dry, put it on, film the intro. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye.